So Matt, it's August. Yeah. Movies haven't really come back yet, despite Christopher Nolan's best efforts. Looks that way. No Wonder Woman 1984. No Black Widow. No Tenet. <sighs> well, I guess in this situation, the only thing to do is to reacquaint myself with classic literature. Welcome to Deep Focus. I'm Nate. And I'm Matt. And today we are discussing the 2006 anomaly that is known as Superman Returns. It really is an anomaly among the superhero genre, is it not? Yeah, absolutely. The kind of sits out there in no man's land. Uh, not really re well received at the time and more or less forgotten with the past 15 years. Uh, now that the Nolan Batman movies have really taken off, the Marvel movies, this thing kind of stands out there as uh, unknown to anybody almost at this point. Yeah, Warner... Uh, obviously wanted this to be the new Superman franchise and really under underperformed for them. Right. But it's it's an interesting film to examine. Because interesting, the, just your phrasing there, uh, the new Superman franchise, yeah. uh, because this film was doing what actually was not really ever tried before, which is to be a sequel that ignored previous sequels. Yeah. Uh, so this was meant as a direct sequel to Superman 2. It was promoted as that at the time. And uh, that's become something that's happened recently. Terminator did that with its most recent movie. Uh, the new Halloween movie just decided to ignore all the sequels. Uh, so it's happening now. Um, kind of the first film, I think, to do that. Right. I can think of it. I can't think like of anything that. that did it before. But weird, because they didn't really necessarily, in my opinion, do anything with this idea of it being... It could have been a, just a complete reboot, other than... They borrowed the aesthetics of the first two Richard Donner Superman movies. And, and I think that's the main reason why they did it, because I, as we go through the story, I, I think it becomes increasingly clear that this isn't exactly married to the Donner films. Uh, some continuity errors that it creates. And... Yeah, it, it wants to be, but it conveniently forgets some of the details of the Donner films to make this new story work uh, from a dramatic standpoint. Yeah. But as you said, it, it borrows some of the aesthetics, so the... The look of the Fortress of Solitude, the crystals. Marlon Brando reprised uh, from Beyond the Grave. Can he see us? No, he's dead. And John Williams' theme, of course, and even the opening credits, the style, the, the typeface. And so there, there's a lot of nostalgia I think the creators have for the Downer films, and they do recognize that that is the classic interpretation of Superman the live-action Superman, anyway, on the big screen. Right, so, well, maybe we can just, before we delve into this movie, obviously Superman's a mainstay of American cinema, yeah. uh, not just American cinema, American culture. Uh, he's just been entertainment, in, in general. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's been in, obviously, the comic books, but then there's been TV serials, cartoons, uh, there's been just all sorts of pop culture references to him throughout the years. You sign a lot of autographs? Oh, yeah, you? Um, they asked me to bend stuff a lot. I can see that. As a, as a fan of Superman, we're both are fans of the character and of the comic books in particular, which should be obvious from my T-shirt. When you're pushing 40 and you're wearing a Superman T-shirt, it's uh, time for you to look at what's going on with your life. Well, <laughs> I do own a, a Superman T-shirt as well. I just... Uh... I have a lack of courage, I guess. Or a certain amount of integrity that you're not wearing it publicly. <laughs> um, but I'm a huge fan of the Golden Age iteration of Superman. I know you're more of a Silver Age uh, yeah, vision of him. Yeah, that's kind of what I that's... grew up reading. And that's most people. Right? Most people would see that. You know, the Golden Age Superman did not have the ability to fly. He did not have the, quite the level of powers that we're accustomed to with the character. And this film's very aware of that version of Superman. I mean, you, you do see yeah. some the flashbacks to that. Uh, he's bouncing. He's he's not flying when he's young. He's discovering his powers, right? Yeah. And um, 
that one insert shot with the needle uh, bending on his arm. Yeah, it evokes the the iconography, right? I mean, the the, the shot of him holding the car is, of course, uh, you know, an image of the original Action Comics uh, cover as well. Yeah, so very first appearance. It's it's definitely taking some of that, but it's it's borrowing mostly from the Donner version of Superman. And I will be on the record as saying I'm not a big fan of Donner's Superman. They're fine, but I yeah. don't have any of the love that a lot of other people have for them. Yeah, they're... I know you like them a lot. Yeah, well. They're just very nostalgic for me. I grew up watching them over and over, and and Christopher Reeve's uh, performance is iconic. And uh, so I, I was excited to see that this was set in that same universe. I thought that was a neat idea. At the same time, I, I, I did want the creators to really to maybe go their own direction with it. And, and in some ways, they do in this film. But it is still very married to uh, that existing universe. Yeah. And it does pay homage to it throughout. And I think it sometimes hampers this movie. I mean, I I don't think there's been a really perfect live action Superman. The Fleischer yeah. serials are the best cinematic portrayal of Superman. They're, They're great. brilliant. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Anybody who has little kids, have them watch the Fleischer serials. They're little short, you know, 10 minute things and they're just absolutely brilliant. Love yeah, them. big inspiration for the uh, the Batman animated series, just the style of those yeah. as well. You know, as far as the live action Superman movies, I'm going to go ahead and say I think this is the best of them. Uh, I really do think this one captures the spirit of Superman and is able... It does benefit able to... from modern visual effects, certainly. Well, well, it has that, but I also I think more to the way it actually takes the character and and, char and develops the character and the figure of Superman is the most compelling of them all. I, lo I think the common thing now for a lot of people is to look at this movie and say it's kind of the worst of Snyder and the worst of Re of uh, Donner. Right? It's got kind of the campiness. I mean, there's a lot of jokes in this, a lot of humor. I mean, uh, I'd like something to get out of prison. The appeals court called Superman as a witness, and he wasn't around. Of out there How much do you think that pisses Superman. off Superman? So give him to someone else. A lot. A lot. And then it's also got somberness and kind of almost a messiah complex going on. And a, I lot, think, a lot of Christ imagery in this film. And when it came out, I remember thinking, man, they're laying it on pretty thick. And then I saw the Snyder Man of Steel, and I thought, <laughs> this thing's practically subliminal compared to that. Um, well, it's interesting to compare it to those other films because this watching this now and I hadn't, hadn't watched this in several years it, it feels so quaint I mean I, just compared to modern uh, superhero films and, and this isn't that old I mean it's what, 14 years old I guess at this point it, it's right as Nolan was making his movies yeah, for Batman yeah and people I, I think don't realize how old those those films are already as well but it it's a pretty measured film uh, it, it's a little slower paced there's, there's plenty of action, but there, there's not a ton. And Superman, right. the film seems very interested in just the theme, you know, the thematic um, aspects that maybe you wouldn't expect from a superhero film in general. So Superman as a loner, Superman as an alien, Superman as someone who is looking for those human connections and just is having difficulty yeah. with that. Uh, uh, and that's the genesis of, of the plot, right? Yeah, there's a lot of thematic ambition here that you wouldn't necessarily expect. Yeah. So, I mean, our story begins five years after Superman 2, although realistically it seems like that was, a lot has happened in those five years. Uh, if technologically, they have cell phones now. A lot of people were, yeah. <laughs> so, but, uh, so five years after Superman 2, he had left uh, because astronomers had found what they believed were the remains of Krypton. He went looking for it, comes back, and confirms that it's been destroyed. If Krypton was destroyed, how did the astronomers find it? I guess they thought they found it, and he went to investigate. I suppose you could find remains of... Superman's not really great at science. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, it's a little questionable exactly how it is that they figured out what Superman how, or where Krypton was, but they, the point is that he's gone. World kind of moves on without Superman, 
and now he returns and the question is do we need superman where where is the world at and what is his place in this world it's kind of a meta quality quality to it too you know superman is returning of course to cinemas as well and he's returning in the story uh, well, so, even adding on to that, okay, so he's gone for five years, it's 2006, it's five years after 9-11, and, you know, there's this sense of, well, the world's had all these terrible things happen, and mm -hmm. realistically, you know, just in terms of the audience going to that theater, would say we've had five years since 9-11, and what would this world be like if we'd had a Superman that would, could stop these kinds of events? Yeah. Uh, but he returns, he gets back to Metropolis, gets a job at the... Daily Planet, uh, with Frank Langella taking on the role of Perry White. Perry White, yeah. Kent? Hey, Chief. Thank you for giving me my job back. Don't thank me. Thank Norm Palmer for dying. Uh, really nice little bit of casting there. Actually, I like that. I like. Uh, I don't remember the name of the actor, but the guy that plays Jimmy Olsen is also very funny and He's good. good. Uh, lots of good comedy. And he and Brendan Routh, who took over the mantle of Superman uh, for this outing, uh, have a nice little chemistry together. You yeah. know, I think... Brandon Routh gets really crapped on for this, but I he like a, him in the role. He does a good job. I mean, I, I I think a lot of people criticize him for maybe imitating Christopher Reeve too much. My palpitations, they're gone. What did you do? I didn't do anything. Call me Catherine. Catherine. I'm glad you're feeling better. But it, it's tough because he's in a film that's set in that same world, so I think people do expect... His performance he's playing the same character. Yeah, to emulate him in some ways. But he does kind of bring his own spin to it. And, and again, I, I think the fact that the, the film is exploring uh, a greater thematic depth uh, into the character of Superman, his performance really delivers in that regard to, um, to really bring that emotional side that maybe Christopher Reeve didn't quite do because those films didn't really call for that. Right, they were a much lighter fare. Yeah. You can suppose a, bit, a little bit with the relationship with Lois and Superman 2 gets a little bit more into it, but even then it's so very light. This one does take it a little more seriously and it really does give the sense of what does it mean to be Superman? What's the burden? I, I, my friends who don't like the character, that's almost always their comment, right? This is boring because he, Superman can do anything. He's got these powers, so therefore where's the drama? It's just lazy. You know, it's But... Drama for a Superman story is almost always going to have to come from within because of that, right? And if you do it right, you can get some very interesting things. And I think this film does do it right on that. It doesn't handle the overall plot that well. Uh, yeah. So, you know, if we continue on, if it's about it's about a half hour before we get into any real Superman action, right? With the, the very well done uh, plane crashing. It's probably the best scene. action sequence in the film. Very much so, yeah. Yeah, it, it's a great great sequence and the modern visual effects are used to full effect here but it's not over the top it's not Zack Snyder headache inducing nightmare it has a great sense of spectacle and the score you know is great during that scene you're aroused you're, you're you're excited Superman's back you know yeah. that's what you want you know and I think the problem might be it came in a little too late in the movie audiences had maybe kind of already started to be, what's taking so long here, yeah. right? We see a lot of Lex Luthor that first half hour, probably more of him than anybody else. And uh, Kevin Sp Spacey is playing Lex Luthor, uh, I think does a pretty good job with the character. I like his, his take on it. It's a good choice. Um, but it's very kind of what's he up to, right? Nobody really, you don't get a sense of what he's doing. Uh, well, Eventually, his plot is revealed, and it's very uninspired. It's very recycled. It's very close to what we had in the first Superman, yeah. Richard Donner yeah. film, uh, whereas that was going to be to use nuclear weapons to blow up California and create a new ocean line. Uh, this one is to take some Krypton crystals and then create a new continent. He's still obsessed with land. Yes, yeah, uh, just like Ted Turner. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so it, it isn't... That part's where you kind of go like, ugh, it just falls down a little bit there. Yeah. Um, I think they had probably somebody in the studio breathing down their neck saying, well, the, the villain's got to be someone we know. we got to have a Lex well, Luthor. We know that name. It's a sense of obligation, right? right. I mean, he, Lex Luthor ha has to be in the film. He has to be back. He's Superman's arch enemy. He was the villain in the prior films. So, yeah, uh, he has to be there. 
So someone like Brainiac, I, even though that would have probably been interesting. Well, supposedly that was going to be if they did a sequel to this, it would have been Brainiac yeah. as the villain in that. And I think even Kevin Smith's screenplay before this was written uh, featured Brainiac as the villain. That's true. I mean, that's one thing I guess to comment on. This movie is the product of many, many failed attempts at Superman. It's not like this yeah, had been that's right. sitting around. Nobody was trying to do a Superman movie. This one was... I mean, you Tim can see Burton, the, yeah, you can find the old uh, Nicolas Cage as Superman. <laughs> Have you seen those uh, costume oh, test gosh, shots? They're awful. They are just terrible. It's pretty painful. Oh, one of the things you go, you know what? I almost wish they had made that movie just so you could kind of look at it and go, what a curious little article, artifact of a certain period of time, right? Yeah, Tim Burton. I, you know, Tim Burton tackling Batman makes sense, but Superman, I don't know. And Nicolas that, Cage? Yeah, that would have been. Yeah. Out there, couldn't couldn't have gone for it myself, but <laughs> but no, I mean I think that that action scene is really, you know, it's it's a fair point to compare that to say something what we're finding in the Zack Snyder Supermans that have yeah. come out. It seems very quaint, like you said, compared to those. Uh, it's simply saving a plane. It's not you know destroying fifteen or sixteen buildings, punching fifty and, planes. Yeah, exactly. To you know, just Zod. smashing right through it, and you know, just things blowing up all over the place. Yeah. And it, it gets at who Superman is. He's a protector. And I liked when I was watching this movie again, hear how much his powers are used to save and help people. Uh, you can see his heat vision, you know, when he's you know, destroying the debris as it's falling down towards the end of the movie. That's totally different than the Zack Snyder Superman who would have just been blaring a bunch of, uh, you know, things to, you know, just destroying building after building after yep. building with his heat vision and destroying everything in sight without no regard for what it meant. Um, this is not who Superman is, right? He's the man that wants to protect. He's the one that wants to, you know, really help uh, show people the way. And this movie gets that element right. And then the way they stage that scene is perfect because it ends with not only the sense of, okay, excitement, Superman saves people. Yeah, that montage have... too early on after he comes back, just showing him fighting crime and stopping that bank robbery and helping people. And, and yeah, it, it just establishes Superman as... Sure, he may be uh, someone who feels alone or feels like an outsider, but he's not really meant to be this kind of dark, tortured character that, uh, that we, we see nowadays. He still has a sense of optimism, and he still has a sense of... Um, he, he, he enjoys helping people. Right. Taxi! Hey! Taxi! <laughs> <laughs> So the heart of the story really is him and Lois Lane. And, it's the core of the film. Right. So he loves her. She's upset that Superman left, loves him, uh, and they kind of reacquaint. And we learn that Lois has had a son. And if you've ever seen a movie before, you will know the father is actually Superman. Uh, it's uh, kind of, you could see that one coming without Superman's X-ray vision. Yeah, which creates a problem because in Superman 2, uh, Lois... Had spent the night with Superman, right? But That's the big story that she's known for as the... Yeah, um, but by the end of the film, uh, her memory is erased. Right. So that uh, that's conveniently forgotten in yep. this film. The little bit, that's one of the continuity errors, for sure, uh, and, in this movie. Although the little boy doesn't seem all that bright because he throws a piano across the room and kills the guy and still doesn't kind of pick up that James Marsden isn't his dad. Not well, the sharpest knife in the drawer, that kid. He's what, five, six, maybe? I don't think you have to be that old to figure out that most children can't throw a piano across a room. He's waiting for Maury Povich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'd love to see that episode. Daddy! You are not! <laughs> I've always had a problem with Superman as deadbeat dad. I've never liked that element of this movie. It's a little weird, and he's a little stalkerish at times as well, uh, kind of going outside Lois's house and using the x-ray vision, and it, it seems very un-Superman-like at times, even though it's like I get it, he's, he's alone, he's in love with Lois Lane, he's trying to make that connection. I feel like there maybe would have been a better way yeah. to do that. I do like, however, how they do the x-ray vision. You know, the way he, I mean, just the visuals of it are really neat because they kind of keep some of the stuff that just becomes more translucent. Yeah, it's that's a neat trick. Neat. And yeah, the sound effect. as well. The fact that he's hearing with everybody from, but you get this kind of distorted sound element is kind of neat. Certainly 
are taller than I thought. Six four. Um, yeah, so there's some neat stuff that takes place there. Yeah. Well, but we should talk about the character of Lois Lane, and, and that's one of the weak points in this film. Kate Bosworth is a perfectly good actress, but is not right for this part. Yeah, um, I agree. She's too young, uh, in my opinion. I mean, because if you think about it, okay, she looks like she's just out of college. She should be a fresh journalist. We're asked to believe that she's been a journalist for several years because she got the Superman story before he left, yeah. then five intervening years since. She should be in her mid to late 30s you know, at this point. Uh, well, and it's a real challenging character to get right because she has to be that, you know, go get a reporter that's kind of abrasive, kind of annoying, but you still have to like her and you still have to understand why Superman is in love with her. And that, that's a tough balance to strike, I think, uh, for, for any actor. Yeah. And, I, you know, I've never been a huge fan of Margot Kidder's Lois Lane, May She Rest in Peace, of course. I, she's fine, I, but I, I never felt like any live action interpretation of that character. You know really who would have been right. really good? Julia Louis Dreyfus. She would have been yeah. right for that part. Uh, well, yeah, no, think about it. Think about Elaine. Elaine was likable, but she was a pain <laughs> in the ass, too. So she would have been right for the part. That actually, did, yeah, that may have worked. Yeah, you know, she might have been a little older by the time they got to this movie, but she would have been good for it. Yeah. It's an interesting choice. That's I'm just telling you. And maybe Putty, if they made it in the late '90s. And Putty could have been Superman. <laughs> <laughs> and Jerry could have been Jimmy Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> Surprised they didn't do a. I'm going back. I'm getting like the time machine. I'm traveling back to the late '90s to make this movie. Uh, huh. We could go on a whole long uh, sidebar about me and my my theories and my thoughts of how to do a Superman trilogy. Yeah, you probably don't want to give that away here. Yeah. Yeah. Because eventually I'm going to sell it and make millions. That's right. That's what's going to happen. Call us up, Warner Brothers. I got it for you. We got the ticket. Move on. Leave Snyder and his cut alone. That's right. I got the... Just forget scraping the, yeah. scrape the barrel. Hashtag make the Myers trilogy. That's the new thing on Twitter right now uh, that I will start when we post this review. Uh, <laughs> After we contest the copyright claim. Yes. <laughs> so... <laughs> I do want to talk about the aesthetics of this film, though. It, it was shot on an early um, Panavision Genesis HD camera. I think it was also used on at least one of the Star Wars prequels. Mm -hmm. So there is kind of a soft, gauzy look to this film. It's hard to know if that was intentional, if that's the, the consequence of the camera. The makeup looks very thick throughout this film. Is this... So I don't remember that when we went and saw it in the theater. Yeah, right? I, I saw it a couple times in the problem. theater. I never s got that feel, but I do like watching it, whether it's on the DVD, the Blu-ray. I have that same experience on the theater. So I want or the home theater. So is it just a video transfer issue? I don't know. It's hard to say, but it it does have kind of a cheap look from time to time. Uh, limitations of the technology. Some of the CGI Superman shots are a little obviously CGI Superman. And, and I do question why they use CGI in some of those shots. Some of the simple flying shots seem like something they could have just done in camera. Uh, but the uh, the color palette's very kind of warm, kind of earth tones. And the production design is very art deco. And pretty well done, though. I, I do like the, the overall look of the sets in this film. Yeah, and the costume design, especially the Superman costume, right? I like it a lot. I mean, the, all the other characters, they have a little bit of that old-timey newspaper, 1940s kind of feel. But Lex Luthor in particular with the kind of chunky dress um, trench coats yep. and things like that. They, just, they do have it, but it's, it's drawn in enough that it's not over the top, yeah. feeling like it's a period piece. Uh, where the movie is less successful is going to be, of course, in Lex Luthor and his plot. I think Kevin Spacey's good in the part, but his plan is really stupid, and his henchmen are not particularly intimidating. Yeah, they barely have any lines, and uh, Kumar shows up. Yeah, Cal, Cal Penn, Penn is just, it's just nothing against him. It's just that it's yeah. kind of awkward. You go like, oh, that's Kumar from Hilton Kumar. And you recognize him, he never says anything the entire film. And he doesn't seem like, he's just not like this big, big guy that you're thinking, man, boy, I really hate to be Superman against him. You know, it's yeah. kind of... Again, it's tough, you know, whoever you are, I guess, against Superman, but you just need someone who at least looks physically menacing to at least Lois Lane. And there's a pretty big plot hole at the end, too. 
Yeah, so the general plot, okay, we're going to create this new continent. The, that's the scheme. Um, I'm not really sure why Lex Luthor thinks this is going to go for premium real estate because it looks like a horrible hellhole to live it's in. It's pretty ugly. Uh, and so it's kind of bizarre in that regard. But nonetheless, I do like how it does get a little bit more intense. Uh, you know, there's actual real beating of Superman. You know, the it's kryptonite. It's emotional scene. Yeah, the, the, the idea of taking this continent and lacing it with kryptonite so that it absorbs the mineral and it absorbs uh the uh the it, it becomes itself just a way of weakening and defeating superman yeah it's, it's pretty the idea being that lex Luthor creates his own kingdom that is hopefully going to be free of superman right? right unfortunately it creates a plot hole like you said in that somehow despite this being made of kryptonite superman is able to use his powers to lift it up and set it off into outer space. Yeah, it, it's a great visual, but it, it makes no sense. Watching it again, I, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I, I, I think I've come down to earth a little bit on the film. The first time I saw it, I, I, I really, really liked it. Yeah, I remember uh, we saw it in the theater pretty quickly. You were much bigger on it initially than I was, and I yeah. think we've had a little bit. I've grown, and you're, you've cooled down a little bit. My nostalgia for the, the Donner films, I think, fed into it a lot at that time. But I, I still think it's a pretty strong film, and it does take some chances. It does explore some aspects of Superman that other, other films either felt were maybe too boring to pursue or uh, were just afraid to, afraid to pursue. But it, it really does um, uh, deliver that, that thematic depth that I think you want. And it goes to show that... Even if a Superman movie fails, he will still return so long as people are buying tickets.